Born to Marcus and Lenore McClung, Mac McClung was nothing but a high school phenom. He surpassed Allen Iverson as Virginia's all-time leading scorer in high school, and he did it in an acrobatic, high-flying way that captured the nation's attention. Though the vast majority of fans held the opinion that McClung would not thrive at the next level in college, much less the NBA, guess what? He proved them wrong. Mac grew up in Virginia in a small town of about 2,000 people called Gate City in the Tri-Cities metropolitan area. This is where he initially began playing football. Mac McClung was extraordinarily competitive as a child, and his dad Marcus McClung confirmed it saying that Mac was born naturally competitive and he always stood up for himself no matter how small he was. At the time, Mac was so competitive that his dad had to ban him frequently from the gym to allow his sister Anna to work out without interruption. After his mom, Lenore, signed him up for a local league before entering seventh grade, Mac received his first significant exposure to basketball. McClung's interest in basketball developed rapidly and he began training for the sport regularly, to the extent that his father had to express his gladness that he would eventually give up football. Marcus served as a trainer for much of his youthful years and as a result, the family could afford to place Mac on a Richmond-based AAU travel team. Anna, his sister, who completed her soccer career at high school as the VHSL's all-time goal-scoring leader, went on to play the sport at Tennessee and Florida State. McClung would head to Georgetown University and average 16 points per game as a sophomore and then transfer to Texas Tech and continue scoring at the same level. As a high-level combo guard in college, with not much playmaking skills. However, the question was, would McClung even be drafted in 2021? Is there even a possibility that after that he makes an NBA roster? Well, at first, it didn't look so great. Mack went undrafted for that year and went on to play in the NBA Summer League. And guess what? He was awful in Summer League Las Vegas. In 2021, McClung played five games where in that span, he shot below 20% from the floor, hit 9% of his threes, and scored just four points per game. At this point, it didn't look good. Maybe McClung was better suited to play somewhere overseas, and perhaps you'd get in a few runs in the G League, but the possibility of an NBA future at this point looks slim to none. However, just as things were looking as bad as ever, Mack would earn a contract from the South Bay Lakers of the NBA G League. Not a two-way contract, just a contract from a G League team. For those of you who don't know, these boys don't get paid a whole lot. But to foreshadow this would fuel McClung, and I'm not going to stop there. We'll dive deeper into that soon. All you need to know is that Mack was dominant in the G League that year, easily one of the best players in the league despite being just a rookie. And this season in the NBA Summer League, he joined the Golden State Warriors Summer League squad. And let me tell you that the effort this man is putting up is so real, and it's not just the stats, it's the energy, the highlights, the effort, the defense. It's quite literally everything, and McClung is doing it all for Golden State. And as I'm about to lay out to you, this is not a fluke. McClung has seriously improved over the years, and has gotten to the point where he might be a huge part of the future for the Golden State Warriors. That might sound like hyperbole, but after you finish learning what I'm about to tell you about McClung's improvement since entering the NBA, you'll be convinced. So let's start with that. Let's go back to the time when Mac McClung's only claim to fame was that he was a white boy with hops who dominated a tiny high school region. This reputation persisted until his first NBA Summer League because while McClung did have a pretty solid college career, it wasn't enough to remove the stigma surrounding him, which was, this kid is only here because of the hype, because to be honest, too many even up until today in 2022 only know McClung for his high school mixtape. So he had to prove that he was more than that in the summer, but he didn't. McClung looked like a failure in his first go around there. In fact, he was exactly what his biggest haters predicted for him out of high school. A report highlighted his cons, which included inconsistency as an outside shooter, taking dumb shots, playing too wildly, being selfish, a bad rebounder, a bad defender, and being too small to play the two and not a playmaker enough to play the one. As fun as the highlights were in college and high school, some of that report included traits that seemed irredeemable, and all of it was proven true in the summer league. McClung was just too sporadic and too invested in his play, which led to inefficient scoring, and overall his presence was a net negative in the summer league, meaning he left his summer with no contract offer other than with the South Bay Lakers, who signed him to a regular JV contract. However, immediately upon joining the team, McClung would become the star of it, 
and showcase cup games which occur before the regular season. McClung would go on to average 19 points and 6 assists per game, hitting over 40% of his threes and 48% of his overall field goals. These stats were great alone, but they also proved that Mack focused on improving his weaknesses, and the results were astounding. For a guy that was labeled not a true point guard, McClung was pretty impressive and initiated the offense very comfortably. The team finished first place in the Western Division with a 9-3 record, and it was largely due to McClung's playmaking in addition to his scoring. He also showed that inefficiency from three was no longer an issue for him. 40% from out there speaks for itself, but also 48% from the four I think proves just how consistent of a scorer he was from all three levels. Due to his awesome play in the Showcase Cup, the Chicago Bulls called up McClung amid the breakout of the virus. He did only play three minutes for the team, but he made his only shot and more importantly, got his first taste of NBA action. But after his 10-day was over, it'd be back to the G League for Mac McClung. This time though, in the regular season, he turned it up another notch. In 26 games with the South Bay Lakers, McClung would go on to average 22 points, 7 rebounds, 7.5 assists, while maintaining his efficiency from the floor. Unlike the Showcase Cup, which was only 13 games, he played 26 games in the regular season, which tells me that this man's play was no fluke. McClung was so awesome that he'd be awarded for his efforts at the end of the season, when he was given the G League Rookie of the Year award, an award that showcased his impact, but the Lakers also finished 22-11, which earned the Lakers the three seed in the Western Conference, and South Bay would make it to the second round of the playoffs, where McClung played awesomely. What he proved throughout the regular season was that he was a true point guard, as he would finish sixth in the G League in assists per game. And with that being a huge weakness in his game since his days in high school, Mack proved he worked hard enough to earn the label of a true point guard, and he did it while maintaining his incredible high-level scoring. We talked about how he also won the G League Rookie of the Year award, but the biggest award of them all came after the season ended as the LA Lakers signed him to a two-way contract, effectively giving McClung the title of an NBA player for the remainder of the season. He didn't suit up for any more than one game with LA, but we did get a vintage reverse dunk from him, which was pretty cool. However, McClung entered the summer as a free agent once again, so he joined the Lakers Summer League team for two games and has since joined the Warriors Summer League team. In totality, McClung's production has been very intriguing. Throughout four games, he's averaged 16 points per game and three assists on tremendous shooting splits. Checking out his highlights, you sense that McClung has grown as a player over the years. As we mentioned earlier, he used to be sporadic, and his decision-making was questionable at best. Today, he's more calculated with the ball in his hands, and it's made scoring and playmaking a whole lot easier. Mack plays fast in the open break, and he uses his speed to push the tempo and make exciting plays. People don't know, but Mack tested a 2.943 quarter court sprint in the NBA Draft Combine in 2021. That was the fastest figure since 2001. I mean, this guy's also a sprinter. McClung looks just as good as ever. It seems like recently, he's really been working on tightening his handle. He's busted out a few street ball moves in the summer league already, but he's also been doing little things, like locking up guys on defense, which is something that he doesn't get enough credit for. He's also made some nice passes in the half court, demonstrating his improved playmaking skills and really just scoring at will, whether it be outside or inside. Seeing as McClung has improved so drastically over this past year, I'm left to believe that he'll continue doing so. If the Warriors are serious about giving him a shot, that will mean more G League for him next year, obviously. But as of today, it doesn't look unrealistic to view McClung as a serious piece of the Warriors' future, which I don't think I could have said with a straight face just like last year. So good for Mac McClung. Where do you think McClung's future will take him in the NBA? Let us know your thoughts in the comments.